Hello, I'm Catherine. I'm a librarian with the Volusia County Public Library System, and I have the utmost pleasure today to present a special guest, a remarkable woman, Dr. Elizabeth Blackwell. Dr. Blackwell is the first woman to ever receive a degree in the United, a medical degree in the United States of America. Welcome, Dr. Blackwell. Thank you, and have, thank you for having me. Now, Elizabeth, Dr. Blackwell, was born on February 3rd, 1821 in Bristol, England. She was the daughter of beet sugar refiners, but the refinery burned down and in 1832, the family moved to New York. Her father became very active in abolitionist work and many dinnertime discussions concerned child labor, slave labor, and women's rights. Her father believed that each child, regardless of their gender, should be given the opportunities to develop their talents and gifts. When Elizabeth was 17, her father died and her life changed forever. Her gift would be medicine. So welcome Dr. Blackwell. Can you tell me, how did you receive your early education? Well, I was homeschooled as were my brothers and sisters. We were all taught by my father. And then as I reached my teenage years, I was self-taught. So when did your desire to become a medical professional happen? Well, my mother's friend, her name was Mary Donaldson. She was dying of a woman's disease. You see, she could not speak frankly to her male doctor about her illness, about her body, and suffered more because of that. And so she was such in such pain and she just grabbed my arm and said, Elizabeth, why don't you study medicine? You are intelligent. You like to learn. Dr. Blackwell, how does that sound? It sounded good. I made up my mind. I will become a doctor. And how on earth did you get accepted into medical school? <laughs> it's a sort of strange story. I, I was rejected by 17 medical schools and I wrote to Emma Willard. She was the champion of women's education. Could she help me? And she wrote back, Elizabeth, I suggest you visit Dr. Warrington. He is a prominent Quaker physician in Philadelphia. I am certain that he will assist you. So Dr. Warrington fortunately saw my potential and he realized that the prejudice was because of my gender. So he wrote a letter of introduction to his alma mater, Geneva Medical College. But the faculty opposed my acceptance. And in fact, in order to avoid offending Dr. Warrington, they made the medical students decide. So as a prank, they all voted yes unanimously. I do owe a huge debt of gratitude to Emma Willard Dr. Warrington, my classmates, and my mother's friend, Mary Donaldson. So how did you learn anatomy? Well, in medical school, we learned primarily from books and uh, line drawings, charts, etc. But occasionally there was a dissection done, uh, always by the professors, and they were up on a stage, and they would describe to us what they saw. So that did leave something to be desired. But when I was not accepted for internship anywhere in America, I applied in Europe and I lived and worked at La Maternité in Paris. It was a hospital for women and a school for midwives and, and this was not ideal. I knew that my education was lacking and so I hired a tutor, Professor Gaston. Oh, he said, Elizabeth, if you are serious in your desire to become a surgeon, you must review anatomy. So his plan was to take me to the dead house in the middle of the night when no one was around and, and allow me to perform an autopsy. Oh, there were rows of bodies lying on the slabs and the stench was remarkable. But once he handed me that scalpel, and I made my first incision. <laughs> it all began to make sense to me. I will become a surgeon. 
And did you, did you become a surgeon? No, I didn't because of the eye accident. What happened to your eye? Well, I was at the Blockley Alms House. This was after my internship in Europe. And um, it was a hospital for poor people who had medical problems. And, it, and I was told to give eye drops to this newborn baby every two hours. He had contracted gonorrhea from his mother during childbirth. So I leaned close over the little infant's body and I squeezed the soothing solution into his eye. Suddenly a splash of pus hit me square in my left eye. I pulled away, but too late. And then I knew I can never become a surgeon. So Dr. Blackwell, what were you able to achieve? What were your goals? My biggest goal was to open a medical school for women so they did not have to go through everything I did. And to be able to reward women who were not only brilliant students, but who were also able to relate to other women so that they could minister them and their children, their babies. Um, so that's why I was so excited to be able to open the New York Infirmary for Women and Children. I couldn't have done it. You needed three to open a medical school. And Dr. Zach was from Poland. And then my sister Emily by then had become a surgeon. And it just seemed to all work out. And uh, I understand it's still in existence. Yes, it is. You will be very pleased to know that the New York Downtown Hospital, which is formerly the clinic that you started, is still in existence. And in fact, they were the first to respond after 9-11. So thank you, Dr. Blackwell. My pleasure. So Dr. Blackwell, your accomplishments were many. Um, you not only changed the face of medicine for for the United States, but and but for women all over the world. As of 2019, more than half of the students enrolled in medical school are women. Um, I would like to give a special thanks to Linda Gray Kelly, who comprised the role of Dr. Blackwell today. She has done this role and person in a one-woman one play called A Lady Alone, by Lynn Eckhart, and she's done it since about 2009, I believe. If you ever get a chance to see her live performance, I hope you do, and if you don't get that opportunity, it's okay, because we have a copy of it in the library that you can check out. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, my pleasure. And, and really, what she did was she and Emily, because they were both physicians, Emily was a surgeon. What they did was, see, I thought they would pack up and go to some local hospital where legs needed to be sawed off and stuff like that. No, they were pretty, pretty smart about it. They said, we're going to train all the Army Nursing Corps women. So they had that Nursing Corps recruited the women, so that wasn't work on me. And now that they had a room full of them, they bring us in and we'd work with each one and say how to dress each wound and whatever. I'm sure it took months to train them. They weren't real nurses, but I bet they had a career after the war, you know? Mm -hmm.